conference report has on uh, on HB 1800 has been reported uh, and uh, and will be voted on uh, this coming Saturday tomorrow. And what we wanted, what we'd like to do today, is to have our staff to give a briefing on the uh, conference report. So now I will turn it over to Ann Oman and the staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me get the presentation shared and into full screen mode here. Um, as the chairman mentioned, we have before you today the conference report for HB 1800. Um, I'll start with just a brief overview of the guiding principles that the chairman and the conferees had going into conference with the Senate, as well as the revenue adjustments. And then we will go through the individual subcommittee areas um, with the respective staff. Um, as it was in the House budget, the conferees objectives were um, six overarching priorities. Uh, first, to make sure we address any of the unique needs arising from the COVID-19 pandemic that ranges from ensuring that we're fully funding and maximizing federal funds for vaccination efforts, doing what we can to assist small business um, through BEC, the rebuild program and the like, um, enhancing our reserves. The conference report before you has 250 million in addition to the 650 million the governor had included in the introduced budget. So that would be 900 million over the biennium, um, bringing you to a total of about 2.1 billion or 9% of revenues by the end of fiscal year 2022. Obviously funding our public education system so students can return to learn with all the adequate supports. Um, I'm sure you've heard we put some focus on compensation, um, remedial learning efforts and the like, as well as additional support positions through legislation, um, providing meaningful compensation to the other employee groups as well, which we'll discuss shortly, um, making investments in higher education. And again, I think we went beyond both the House and Senate budgets there to also ensure that the universities had some additional resources so that they would be able to manage the pay raises that are included in the budget and finally making progress on our water quality improvement um, requirements to meet the 2025 Bay cleanup measures. This was an area in which the house position was fully retained, we're happy to say. Um, in terms of the resources, uh, this just gives you for future reference, the total general fund resources um, available in the budget we picked up about 581.7 million on the revenue side, plus um, including the transfers component, net of the tax policy adjustments that occurred. That brings you to about 48.2 billion over the biennium. Spending is um, quite close to that and you leaves you with an unappropriated balance of 11.1 million at the close of fiscal year 2022. There is a rather substantial um, unappropriated balance in the first year, so you will be adjust, able to adjust if there are any issues going forward. In terms of the changes to the resources that are embedded in the budget, um, retain the House Amendment, which captures 5.9 million of legislative carry forward balances from the various legislative agencies. Of course, picked up the mid-session revenue adjustment of 673 million over the biennium. Um, the House and Senate both had carried 78.7 million on the core federal tax conformity provisions. Um, in terms of the deductibility of PPP loans, as well as ensuring that the same provisions apply to recipients of Virginia's Rebuild Virginia grants, uh, that would total $100.6 million revenue reduction over the biennium that allows tax year 20 for all corporate and individual um, filers to deduct up to 100,000 worth of um, PPP grants. We also reflect a number of pieces of legislation that went through the bodies, including the sales tax exemption for personal protective equipment, the housing tax credit, the enhanced ag
legislation that came through the Senate on the additional sales tax on the online brokers for hotel rooms. Um, we do recognize 11.7 million in the second year from assumed sports betting and a small reduction in revenue related to the legislation that went forward um, on charitable gaming reform. In terms of balances, um, again, you have the K-12 sales tax transfer component of 55.9 million that was not available until both budgets have been adopted. A net profits increase to ABC, which is slightly lower. Uh, reflecting the cost to ABC of the salary increases. We have the house's position on the transfer of the ABC warehouse property to VCU for a um, sports complex as well as sports education, and then just extra funds in the OAG's Consumer Affairs Revolving Fund. And with that, um, there are no resources related questions. I'll turn it over to Michael to present compensation. Uh, moving on to compensation, uh, the, next, the first slide shows that there's approximately half a billion dollars in general fund support for compensation actions in the conference report. It provides a 5% salary increase for state employees, state supported local employees, adjunct faculty, as well as a 5% state share of it for the SOQ positions. Those are, that's obviously the bulk of the half a billion dollars. In addition to that, there is a, uh, 7.7 .7 million for an additional increase for state police. They would get an additional 3%, increase, so they'd get a total increase of 8%. They'd also get a $100 per year of service compression adjustment to reward the long-term employees at the um, sworn officers at the state police. There's $7.5 billion for a uh, $1,000 bonus for officers the DOC and DJJ. This was carried over from the house budget. There is three and a half million dollars to increase the salaries for registrars so that they would be equal to treasurers and commissioners of revenue. There is also targeted pay increase for local DSS, lowest paid employees and for the Capitol Police. Um, moving on to benefits, what is in the budget for benefits is retain the hundred million dollars from the introduced budget for lump sum payments for the VRS and the health insurance premium increase is unchanged from the introduced budget. There's $2.1 million to fund the impact on the line of duty program and workers' compensation program from legislation that was adopted during the session related to both uh, work presumption for COVID and as well as including EMS employees in the hypertension and heart disease presumption. If, unless there's any questions, we will move on to um, K-12. Thank you, Michael. The conference report adds uh, 466.8 million in direct aid to school division, four school divisions above the 15.4 million that was provided in the special session budget. Um, the report restores almost all of the funding that was unallotted and removed since the um, 2020 reconvened session uh, in last April. Uh, it also includes $845 million in new policy spending. This uh, uh, 217 more than what was proposed in the introduced budget. And 80% uh, of the new policy spending is dedicated to no loss payments and uh, the 5% compensation increase. Uh, this new spending is supported by almost $400 million in additional uh, dedicated uh, sa uh, sales tax for K-12. About half that became available in December in the December reforecast and the other half became available through the mid-session reforecast. There's also uh, about 75 million in gray machine revenues and $75 million in additional lottery proceeds uh, reflected. Uh, the mid-session reforecast provided an additional uh, $193.6 million in uh, K-12 sales tax revenues. In a normal year, about 55% uh, of those funds would have reduced the state's basic aid obligation, uh, which would have provided a, a net increase of $85.7 million to school divisions. However, this year the net increase is only $5 million because the new sales tax revenues are offset by uh, the COVID-19 relief payments that were provided during special session to hold divisions harmless from the, the sales tax decreases that occurred last summer, as well as the uh, no-loss payments that are included in the introduced budget. 
the conference report reflects several technical changes uh, over and above uh, what was in the introduced budget. Um, those adjustments are about $4.2 million, and that includes the, the lottery funds, some program participation updates, and the, the net of the mid-session reforecasts. Um, new policy spending addresses the impact of the, the COVID-19 the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, initiatives include um, $443 million to fully fund the no-loss payments that ensure no school division will lose funding from the amount that was included in the special session budget. Um, $76 million in gray machine revenues are diverted for this purpose, uh, with the remaining coming from the general fund. And I would note that the cost to provide the no-loss payment has been reduced by $70.6 million from the introduced budget because the conference report provided the additional funding um, through the sales tax adjustments for, uh, and other technical updates, as well as some additional lottery per pupil funding. Uh, $40 million in learning loss supplemental payments are provided uh, in FY21. Uh, school divisions would be allowed to use these funds to address remediation and recovery efforts, as well as uh, student supports and COVID-19 related facility modifications. And these payments are based on the state's share of about $156 per free lunch eligible student. Uh, school divisions will be allowed to carry those funds over to the next fiscal year and no local match would be required. And these funds uh, supplement the federal aid um, provided to school divisions through uh, Congress's December federal relief bill. Um, $30 million from the uh, state set aside federal, the state set aside portion of the federal relief, federal relief uh, that was passed in December by Congress um, is included to support uh, competitive grants for innovative uh, remediation and recovery efforts by school divisions. There's also six and a half million dollars uh, from federal relief funding to allow some of our older special education students to continue attending high school for one more year uh, to assist with their post-secondary transition needs. Uh, $26.6 million is included to fund 2020 legislation that requires one school counselor per 325 students. And $49.5 million is included to fund uh, Senate Bill 1257, which um, uh, would provide that at least three specialized student support positions be uh, provided per 1,000 students. And that removes those positions from beneath the support cap and creates uh, create, creating that new staffing standard. Um, $62.1 million from federal relief is uh, included to implement House Bill 2206, and that's the Speaker's Bill, which uh, temporarily increases eligibility for child care subsidies. Uh, $8.8 million in federal relief is provided to implement uh, House Bill 2027, uh, and that, uh, that bill uh, transitions the, the grade three through eight math and reading SOL assessments into a, uh, a growth assessment model that would be implemented this fall. For compensation, it uh, the conference report includes $234.5 million to provide the state's share of 5% pay increase in fiscal year 22. Uh, in order for school divisions to access those funds, uh, they must provide at least a 2% salary increase in the, uh, at any point throughout the biennium. Um, school divisions that provide uh, more than a 2% increase, um, their state match would be prorated up to a 5% increase. Uh, 14.5 million in FY22 is uh, provided to increase the cost of compete adjustment to partially restore the adjustment to its pre-recession levels, uh, increasing the adjustment rate from 10.6% to 18%. And uh, for the Eastern Shore, uh, there is a one-time $2 million supplement for Accomack and Northampton counties to address uh, teacher retention and recruitment challenges uh, resulting from some pay disparities with their, their adjoining Maryland counties. And in order for these school divisions to access those funds, they would be required to provide the full 5% uh, compensation adjustment. And you may remember in the introduced budget, the governor proposed um, expanding the cost of compete adjustment to the Eastern Shore, and this is in lieu of that. Uh, the conference re report uh, fully restores funding for the early childhood initiatives that were adopted during the 2020 session. Uh, the final two restorations include uh, $11 million to increase the VPI per pupil amount for FY22 uh, by $1,300 over the, the fiscal, 20, fiscal year 21 level. 
And there's also funding to restore the recruitment and retention incentives for early childhood recruit, um, educators. And uh, there's some other early childhood uh, items listed here, uh, most of which were included in the introduced budget. Um, so the, the last few direct aid items include $30 million to maintain the house's goal to distribute 40% uh, of lottery proceeds as infrastructural and uh, operations per people payments. Uh, there's also a provision to provide uh, $1.2 million as an upfront payment to support the merger of Covington and Allegheny school divisions, uh, as well as $3.4 million in supplemental grants, uh, most, most of which uh, restore previously unallotted items. About uh, $750,000 is provided for DOE to implement uh, several recommendations from three JLARC studies that were completed in 2020. This includes funding for uh, training school staff on special education issues and, and different differentiated instruction, uh, implementing statewide teacher recruitment and retention efforts, as well as improved monitoring of uh, school divisions compliance with state requirements. There are also uh, several related language amendments included. Um, Finally, in the central office budget, there are a few other items. Uh, $7 million in federal relief is allocated to uh, support expansions to the Virtual Virginia uh, program uh, during the pandemic. Uh, $365,000 is also provided for the agency to uh, implement cultural, profici cultural proficiency outreach to, uh, to school divisions. And um, at last, there's a few other language amendments that are described here, um, including several seeking some agency recommendations on some policy matters, um, most notably uh, credentialing for school nurses. And with that, uh, I will hand it over to Tony to address higher education. Thank you. Uh, in the area of higher education, there is uh, $260.3 million in the budget that would be allocated to colleges and, and, and universities from the general fund, about 56 and a half million of federal. Uh, the largest piece of this is about 149.5 million uh, for affordable access. Uh, you can see uh, there are about six institutions that, uh, that get the bulk of that um, and they're listed below that. There's also 34 and a half million of federal money for, the, uh, for, for COVID testing. There's general fund for financial aid of about $30 million, as well as another $22 million in federal gear funds. Uh, funding in the budget uh, will implement the G3 program uh, at the full amount that you uh, had provided in the previous session, as well as providing money for outreach for the, uh, for the community colleges. And then there's $19.1 million at Norfolk State and Virginia State uh, to address student access affordability and retention. On the next page, the next slide. Next slide. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Five million for the uh, Norfolk State Old Dominion School of Joint School of Public Health. There's uh, 10 million for cancer research and then 10 and a half million for some institution specific uh, items, including uh, the, the items that you see listed below. Moving on. Uh, in other higher ed, uh, there's eight and a half million dollars uh, for the TAG program. This increases the award to four thousand dollars, and also it maintains the house, the, uh, the the house position of an additional funding in order to restore the grant for online students at at the two thousand dollar level. Uh, there is funding for the extension program at Virginia State to match federal monies. One and a half million for that. Uh, there is funding for the higher education centers, uh, for VIMS, for some research uh, efforts there. Uh, there's additional money at, at the extension program at Tech to add agents and research specialists. And then there is uh, uh, funding at CHEV, 2.7 million, again, listed below, half of which is going to the internship program. Lastly, at state museums, there was funding for the libraries, the state library for local library aid. Uh, at Jamestown, Yorktown, uh, there, were, there were dollars provided for the American Revolution 250 Commission, as well as for educational program and digital marketing. And then uh, at the Museum of Fine Arts, there was a million dollars provided to do planning for the 
redevelopment of Monument Avenue, as well as language that required a plan and to involve stakeholders, and then some smaller amounts for the agencies listed below that. I believe Susan is next in Health and Human Resources, if there are no questions. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the body, um, in Health and Human Resources, just wanted to point out that the amendments uh, before you provide $173 million more than the introduced budget and spending in HHR. Moving to the next slide, um, in terms of COVID-19, there's 89.3 million over the biennium for the mass vaccination efforts in new federal dollars. Um, there's also 6.1 million general fund and about 41 million in new federal funds for state agencies to support disease surveillance and investigation, testing and contact tracing. And I, uh, I'll point out that the funding will support 47 epidemiologists and communicable disease nurses across the 35 health districts, as well as some uh, positions in the central office to support them. Moving to the next slide, in terms of long-term care, there's 129. 29, almost 130 million in state and federal funds to increase the personal care rates. And I've got a table right there that you can see um, how those will increase um, starting May 1. Um, and just remember, you, you had included a 2% increase starting July 1 um, already. So that will take effect as well. And it will move them all. You'll see the last uh, column there to see what it would move them to in Northern Virginia and the rest of the state come January 2022. Um, the goal was to try and make sure that they hit minimum wage and um, also uh, slightly exceed minimum wage. Um, there's $6.9 million in state and federal funds for the sick leave, uh, paid sick leave for personal care attendants. Um, and you saw that earlier today in House Bill 2137. Um, there's also some training. In terms of the nursing homes and assisted living auxiliary grant payments, there's almost uh, $94 million in there for state and federal funds um, in the second year to provide a $15 a day add-on payment for the nursing homes. Um, and then of course the, the house language uh, has been retained to focus future state funding on improving care to patients. Um, there's a little bit of money for specific nursing facilities that was in the house budget. And then there's $4.4 million in the second year to increase the auxiliary grant rate by 10% to those uh, individuals that are in assisted living facilities that qualify for it. Going to the next page, um, there's $14.2 million to add 435 uh, DD waiver slots in the second year. That will bring the total slots uh, that will be implemented in 2022 to 985. Um, and uh, just there's a number of language amendments that uh, address some of the specific issues. I'll just highlight a couple. Uh, work group is created to look at some of the issues related to the DD waiver rates and develop a plan for eliminating the waiver li waiting list. Um, and then to have uh, DMAS request federal approval to continue telehealth and virtual uh, or distance learning for service options for the waiver recipients. And then lastly, to direct any additional federal funding uh, that might come down for COVID-19 economic impacts to be allocated to the DD waiver providers with some priority to those that um, have experienced significant disruption of their operations um, during the health emergency. Next slide. Uh, this is largely um, what was in the House budget. I would just point out the very last bullet. Um, there is 250,000 uh, general fund dollars um, uh, for an, the analysis of the uh, Medicaid and FAMIS requirements on maternal and child health outcomes, the language uh, related to that amendment would require uh, DMAS to report that information back to the um, task force that's created in legislation this session on uh, maternal health data and quality measures. Going to the next slide, other health care spending. Just a couple I'll point out here. Um, the funding for the non-general fund funding for Lake Taylor uh, Transitional Care Hospital uh, was actually increased uh, to, to accurate, accurately reflect um, the supplemental payment there to 5.4 million. Um, there's also an amendment would then add on, um, in addition to the CHKD funding, it would add on a little over 700,000 for Children's National Medical Center. That's a restoration uh, from last year. Um, there's $2.7 million to implement Medicaid remote patient monitoring. That's coming out of um, uh, two ho uh, House bill and a Senate bill that you see listed there. Um, there's uh, $1.6 million for the behavioral health loan rep repayment program and $500,000 for the nurse 
preceptor incentive program. Those are both restorations from last year. Moving to the next slide, um, in the health department, just want to point out a few things here. Um, it does include $2.8 million to phase in the update to the funding formula, um, used to distribute funds to the local health departments. Um, there's almost 300,000 for the state share of rent increases in local health departments. Part of that is a restoration from last year, and then it will recognize those leases that are increasing this year. There's uh, several more that are going uh, to increase. There's $750,000 in the second year for the uh, Virginia sexual, or actually I think that split 100,000 the first year and 650 the second year for the Virginia sexual and domestic violence prevention fund. Uh, coming down a little bit, the, most of these others were in the house budget, but uh, there was the lead water testing program at 250,000 and some support for the health workforce uh, programs at about a little over $100,000. Uh, moving to the next slide, in terms of the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services, um, uh, the, the amendments before you will restore $3.8 million in the second year to fully fund the pilot projects to address census pressures um, at the state uh, hospitals. That'll bring the total in the second year to $7.5 million, which was actually uh, what you included last year um, in the budget. Um, there's 3.5 million, that's uh, a pickup um, uh, for discharge and diversion pilots for people with dementia. Um, it's a restoration of 2.1 million for forensic discharge planning and jails. This will add, uh, I believe, three more jails uh, where that will take place. And a restoration of a uh, little over 700,000 for the um, Commonwealth Center for Children and Adolescents to have some additional clinical staffing. I did list the language amendments there. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, walk through those. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we'll move to the next slide. Some other actions, the uh, brain injury service contracts, that was a compromise. And so there's $1.2 million for those contracts. Uh, a little bit of money for the SILs, that was a restoration. And uh, the dementia case management program, also a restoration. Uh, moving to the next slide. In terms of TANF spending, just wanna, uh, recognize the first two items. The House budget uh, increased TANF payments by 5%. Uh, this would now increase those payments by 10%. And there's language in there that would require um, the, uh, the Department of Social Services to increase those payments every year until, they, until the payment level is actually equivalent to 50% of the federal poverty level. Uh, there's also $2.1 million to um, institute TANF individual development accounts. Um, and then um, going to the, to the next slide, just wanna highlight this. These are the supplants um, that uh, primarily come from um, the recognition of the 6.2% uh, enhanced federal match dollars for the Medicaid famous and uh, MCHIP programs um, and a little bit in DSS for their uh, Title IV-E foster care and adoption programs. Moving to the next slide, I uh, just want to highlight two here. The first one um, is language that would put together a workforce in the a work group in the secretary's office to examine a new organizational placement for aging services to highlight that um, in light of um, the demographic uh, shift. And then the last one, uh, there's a language amendment which um, has Medicaid managed care reporting of provider de uh, provider determinations or terminations. I'm sorry, that's a typo. It should say terminations. Um, and that was an issue I think that came up during the session. Um, and I'll just turn it over now to um, David and talk about natural resources. Thank you, Susan. Um, starting with uh, water quality, uh, the conference report uh, uh, includes a substantial investment um, in, in grants for uh, wastewater treatment plant improvements. Uh, and this is a combination of $50 million in cash, as well as uh, $50 million in, in bond proceeds uh, in the second year. And uh, this is sort of one third of what the anticipated need is related to the enhanced uh, nutrient removal certainty bills that advance through both um, uh, bodies. Uh, there's also a substantial investment um, in the Water Quality Improvement Fund itself. Um, this is a $30 million increase over and above what was included in the governor's introduced budget um, and most substantially includes $65 million uh, for ag BMPs. Uh, there's a $25 million uh, deposit um, to SLAF uh, for uh, uh, 
uh, assisting uh, localities in making stormwater improvements. Um, and there's a, a doubling of the appropriation for the VCAP program, as well as the restoration of $170,000 for environmental literacy programs. At DCR, uh, the conference report includes $4 million for Project Harmony. Uh, this would cover the cost of uh, recovery, cataloging, and repatriation of uh, headstones and other materials from the former um, Columbian Harmony Cemetery, as well as the establishment of the uh, Harmony Living Shoreline Memorial. Um, there's a $3.5 million uh, set out within uh, the Land Conservation Fund um, for uh, identifying and evaluating um, the, the purchase of uh, uh, tribal lands uh, that historically had uh, uh, belonged to the Chickahominy tribe. Uh, there's a, a restoration of um, funding for state park operating support, as well as for the, the dam safety program. Um, other items in DCR, uh, $2 million uh, toward the uh, purchase of a river farm. Uh, $1.5 million for uh, Mason Neck State Park to be connected to the local municipal water supply. Uh, $1.4 million um, for modernization and repair um, projects at Brakes Interstate Park. Um, a restoration of $740,000 um, that was included uh, last session uh, for, to assist Danville in the construction of Riverfront Park. Um, there's uh, 400,000 each year for uh, ling Lingabia remediation activities at Lake Gaston, uh, as well as $350,000 for uh, the Mendota Trail Conservancy for uh, a trail project. In DEQ, uh, the conference report uh, maintains uh, the, the restoration of funding for uh, the department's water, air, and land protection programs. Uh, there is a $1.1 million appropriation uh, for the stormwater management fund with associated language that would have the, the state water control board uh, adopt a new fee schedule that ensures that uh, permitted programs are supporting at least 60% of the cost of the, these programs going forward. Um, there's $230,000 uh, for erosion and, and sediment control activities um, related to uh, Senate Bill 1258. Um, and there's also a $175,000 one-time uh, appropriation uh, for a research project that will look at um, uh, whether certain plantings could uh, remove road salt from stormwater runoff. Uh, other natural resources actions, um, there's a, a delay to the implementation of boat ramp access fees at DWR, and uh, the language also requires the department um, to, to study and provide recommendations for, for how to best uh, maintain or improve uh, those boat ramps going forward. Um, and there's also uh, language directing um, DWR as well as uh, DCR uh, to assess the feasibility of uh, establishing a state park at Rapidan uh, Wildlife Management Area. This was a, a pickup of the Senate Amendment. In DHR, there are several um, uh, uh, items related to uh, various historic and, and cultural um, activities. This includes uh, funding for the Carver Price Legacy Museum, uh, the Loudoun Freedom Center, um, the restoration of funding to establish an underwater archaeology program at the department. Um, uh, sorry, this uh, doubled up the Riverfront Park was uh, previously discussed. Um, there's $500,000 for um, uh, the Jackson project, which is uh, a project in, in the city of Richmond to uh, celebrate the sesquicentennial of the establishment of Jackson Ward. Um, and there's also $3 million for the city of Chesapeake uh, for a project um, that would uh, establish a, a, a historic uh, cultural attraction um, at the Great Dismal Swamp Maroon Village, uh, as well as commemorating um, the Underground uh, Railroad. Moving on to Ag and Forestry at uh, VDAX, uh, there's an increased appropriation for the Office of uh, Farmland Preservation. Uh, there's $2 million um, 
uh, additional for the food access investment uh, uh, fund, which increases the total appropriation uh, in the fund of, to uh, $3.1 million. Um, there's a million dollars in the first year to, to capitalize the uh, dairy producer margin coverage premium assistance program, which was uh, established um, by bills uh, from both the House and Senate. Uh, there's $600,000 to support the Virginia Agricultural uh, Food Assistance Program. Um, there's $250,000 in one position at VDACs um, to uh, uh, help coordinate with v VEDP um, in the uh, implementation of Virginia's International Trade Plan, uh, as well as restoration of funding for infrastructure re repair uh, projects at Halliday Lake uh, 4-H. In the Department of Forestry, um, there's a restoration of funding uh, included last session that would allow the department to establish a hardwood forest habitat program. Um, there's a restoration of uh, uh, funding and positions for various activities at the department related to uh, WIP3. And there's also a language and amendment that's directing the department to uh, convene a work group to look at uh, best practices and recommendations to um, preserve uh, and increase tree canopy coverage in uh, developing areas. And I will hand it over to Kim for uh, commerce. Thank you, uh, David. At the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development, um, the budget includes um, $100 million over the biennium to support the expansion of broad uh, band infrastructure through the state's um, VADI program. Additionally, um, the budget includes historic investments in the Virginia Housing Trust Fund. Um, that total over the biennium is $125 million. Um, and then additionally at the um, Department of Housing and Community Development, the budget capitalizes and creates a program um, to deploy resources through community development financial institutions, which in turn can help support small businesses throughout the Commonwealth through grants and loans. And it capitalizes this new program with $10 million of one-time funds. And there are several other smaller actions and items under DHCD. I won't go over all of them and I'll move on to the Virginia Employment Commission. At VC, the budget contains approximately $19 million of general funds in one-time funding um, related to the forgiveness of no fault overpayments of UI benefits um, during the pandemic. This was connected to House Bill 2040 um, the moving of these forgiveness of overpayments from to the general fund prevent any increase to UI taxes on employers. Additionally, the budget includes um, approximately $15 million in general funds for the agency, um, focused really on customer service and operations. Um, the $10 million appropriation will allow them to continue their current customer service levels for, through the end of fiscal year 2022. Um, the remaining $5 million will allow them to update um, their, their uh, technology and UI technology systems um, that can better serve customers um, through finally completing the UI modernization project. Um, additionally, the budget includes two smaller items. It includes the initial interest payment on uh, federal cash advances to pay UI benefits. Um, and then it includes one-time funding of $300,000 for the commission um, to understand the cost with establishing a state paid family medical leave program. And moving on to economic development, um, the, the proposed budget um, the budget includes $10 million in one-time funding for infrastructure upgrades at a, at a site um, to, that's currently underway and becoming a pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing cluster in Virginia with three companies locating at that site. So that, those, that one-time investment will help with the continued expansion of this cluster in Virginia. 
Um, additionally, the budget provides for about $12 million in initial payments um, for both um, Microsoft and CMA, CGM, which were two MEI projects um, approved by the General Assembly through bills this session. Um, and then a couple other smaller items in economic development incentive payments um, that I won't go over. Um, but And then the next slide just shows continued investments in economic development um, at the Virginia Economic Development uh, Partnership, the conference report provides $9 million to uh, VEDP to support various programs at the agency, including um, investments in the International Trade Plan, as well as the Talent Solutions Program. Under the Virginia Innovation Partnership Authority, um, which houses CCAM, the Commonwealth Center for Advanced Manufacturing, um, the conference report includes $1.4 million to allow the organization to pursue federal research funding. And next slide. Um, the conference report includes um, an expansion of a work group um, to study remedies to labor related violations on state capital contracts. This was originally included in the budget during the special session of last year. Um, the conference report expands upon the initial concept and also includes a separate amendment at the Department of Labor and Industry um, to, to support the work of this study of $300,000. The goal really here is to take a look at this issue and come back, come up with a comprehensive legislative and budgetary package for next session. Next slide. Um, the several actions related to small business um, the conference report includes uh, a total investment of um, $145 million in the Rebuild Virginia program. This is due to an action of investing an additional $25 million in that program, which would help support um, grants to small businesses affected by the COVID-19 pandemic of about 600 businesses would be able to assert, be served with the additional funds. Additionally, um, it includes small business includes uh, one language amendment that was a recommendation of JLARC um, for them to develop a improvement plan for the business one stop, which is a one stop um, resource for small businesses in terms of uh, starting a business in Virginia. Next slide. Um, the, at DMME, there are two actions in the conference report. It provides funding to support um, a study of the health and environmental impacts of gold mining in Virginia. This is connected to House Bill 2213. And it includes in a language amendment to uh, direct the agency to convene a work group to assess the creation of an RPACE program in Virginia. And moving on to uh, general government actions. Um, uh, first, the conference report proposes new funding at OAG connected to two bills, House Bill 2004 and Senate Bill 1261. Um, the majority of this funding represents about $3.3 million investment to expand appeal rights in Virginia, um, which will overall increase overall case loads at OAG. Um, at the Department of General Services, the conference report establishes a review process as a resource for the legislature to better understand process and financial implications of changes to Virginia's Public Procurement Act and supports this effort with a $400,000 appropriation. Moving on to elections, several elections related items in the conference report. Um, the conference report, uh, the budget includes a full funding for the replacement of the state's voter registration system. Um, it allows $1 million in remaining funds that were appropriated during the 2020 special session to be um, continued to be reused to reimburse uh, general registrars for prepaid postage co costs for the return of absentee ballots. Additionally, um, it adds language to extend absentee voting laws, absentee voting related policies such as drop boxes and prepaid postage, 
for the return of absentee ballots until the new laws um, codifying changes to Virginia's absentee voting um, take effect July 1, 2021. Additionally, um, there's language included in the conference report that creates uniformity and collecting petition signatures for state and local offices during the COVID-19 pandemic. Finally, in elections, there is an appropriation of about $300,000 um, for uh, voter education and outreach efforts. As Ann mentioned, the budget includes an additional deposit of $250 million into the Revenue Reserve Fund. This brings total new deposits to that fund uh, to $900 million. Um, additionally, at Workers' Compensation Commission, um, there is a partial restoration of funding to increase the reimbursement rate uh, for forensic exams for victims of sexual assault. Um, that brings total funding for the program in FY22 to uh, $2.7 million. Um, last uh, slide on general government, um, there is an, a language amendment included in the conference report, which um, requires the general assembly to appropriate any new federal money um, received uh, to assist with the recovery of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there's also two amendments in the conference report that um, awards a claim for wrongful incarceration to Ms. Esther Thorne. Um, the total for that claim is represents about $300,000. And then finally, in the part four of the budget, um, it forgives an additional 90 million of debt for Dominion customers with accounts over 30 days in arrears as of December 30th, 31st of last year. Um, this, this is combined with actions we took during the special session of last year. Um, this brings total debt forgiveness directed by the General Assembly to $217 million. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Michael J to go over transportation. In in transportation, the uh, conference report allocates $323 million for um, high priority projects. Um, $233 million of this comes from federal money from the new Coronavirus Response Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act. There's also $35 million in unallocated TPOF and revenue sharing funds and 50, the $55 million GF that was included in the introduced budget for transportation. So what what the um, what the conference committee report does is um, take this money and allocate it to high priority projects that are shown on the next slide. Um, there is eighty three million dollars for uh, the DC to New River Valley uh, rail expansion. There's eighty three point five million dollars for VRE for the Manassas line improvements. There's $93 million for the I-64 corridor improvements between Hampton Roads and Richmond. There is $10 million for the multi-use trails that was included in the introduced budget. There's $32 million for um, increased support for WMATA. And then there's $10 million, $10.9 million for a transit equity pilot program and $10 million for a um, initiative that was included in the Senate budget um, related to the Virginia Tech campus um, campus in Falls Church, where they're um, needing to make some transportation improvements in connection with a project the um, the university is working on. And uh, if there's not any questions, I'll give it to David for public safety. Thank you, Michael. Uh, at VDAM, uh, the the conference report su uh, supports a. 50, uh, just under $59 million over the biennium for the purchase, storage, and distribution of PPE. Uh, this includes $47 million that was uh, received just recently at VDAM in, in federal uh, FEMA reimbursements. Um, there's uh, $8.1 million the first year and $6.7 million the second year, uh, and increased staffing and support for the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, it's 2.2 million each year uh, for third-party support for the department's health equity work group. Um, there's 2.5 million the second year uh, 
and continuation funding for the emergency shelter upgrade assistance fund. And there's funding for a community outreach position uh, that can help, uh, that's intended to help improve equity and inclusion uh, in the department's uh, disaster response activities. At DOC, uh, there's 14 million over the biennium for um, increased uh, support for inmate medical costs. Uh, there's 577,000 um, deposited in the correction special reserve fund. This uh, reflects the uh, criminal sentencing impact of uh, both house and Senate bills. Um, there's 471,000 in five positions um, to uh, expand um, sex offender treatment um, offerings in, in state correctional facilities, as well as $250,000 that was included in both the House and Senate budget to um, uh, help subsidize and expand prison video uh, visitation. At state police, the largest item is $13 million in uh, the second year. Um, and this represents the, the cost of IT system upgrades uh, related to the establishment of an automatic uh, expungement or uh, record sealing uh, process uh, pursuant to legislation moving through both chambers. There's 7.2 million the second year. Uh, this will be ongoing funding to support um, the department's uh, replacement of its um, trooper sedans with SUVs. Uh, 301,000 is provided uh, in three positions uh, to support cold case investigations at the department. Um, there, there's funding for additional FOIA support technicians uh, resulting from related to uh, House Bill 2004, uh, as well as a one-time appropriation of $100,000 to uh, make some changes to the criminal information network uh, related to House Bill 2163. And other uh, public safety, um, there is a $3.5 million uh, appropriation in uh, central accounts uh, that would support the establishment of the Virginia Cannabis Control Authority. Um, there is a uh, part three amendment that increases the uh, net profit transfer in ABC by uh, 20 million in the first year. At DJJ, there's an amendment uh, providing $435,000 uh, to support um, Delegate Hope's bill. Uh, this backfills um, lost revenue um, as the department um, is no longer um, going to be accepting child support payments on um, behalf of incarcerated uh, juveniles. Um, I, the Secretary of Veteran and Defense Affairs, there's $5 million uh, the second year for the uh, National Museum of the United States Army, as well as $147,000 to establish a military spouse liaison uh, related to uh, House Bill, Senate, I mean, sorry, Senate Bill 1150. In the Judicial Department, um, there's $8.9 million. Uh, included um, this related to legislation that would establish uh, appeal by right, as well as um, expand uh, the number of judgeships at the Court of Appeals uh, from 11 to 17. Uh, companion amendments also provide 4.2 million at um, the Office of the Attorney General um, and $824,000 uh, at the Indigent Defense Commission commission to reflect their anticipated uh, workload increases uh, related to the bill. Uh, there's 1.5 million provided at uh, OES to support the um, systems improvements. Uh, this is the first of uh, four, year, four years of improvements related to the automatic um, uh, record sealing and expungement process. Um, at IDC, there is a savings action uh, related to um, the elimination of the death penalty. Um, there's also uh, 1.8 million for uh, additional attorneys and administrative support within the department. Uh, 1.1 million dollars to uh, fully support the operation of um, Prince William County a Public Defender Office uh, established last session. And uh, this was missed on the slide, but there's $3.1 million included at the Indigent Defense Commission to support the establishment of a new um, public defender office in Chesterfield County. In capital outlay, uh, 
there's 200 and about 243 million dollars of general fund uh was already mentioned that 50 million of that would be used for the nutrient removal program related to the to to the chesapeake bay it was 137 million that was uh that was put into maintenance reserve to reduce the use of uh, bonds for that program um was already mentioned again about the about the uh, 14.7 million dollars general fund for the uh, acquisition of the ABC property by VCU. VCU would also will also provide 1.3 million dollars towards that. There's about 33 and a half million dollars for project planning, and this includes the replacement of the Supreme Court building, and then the smaller items that you see below uh, as well. In the area of bonds. Uh, there was $192 million, uh, which provides funding for uh, three, three projects that were remaining from the 2016 uh, program, uh, the Wayman Mary Integrated Science Center, uh, the Undergraduate Lab Building at Tech, as well as a renovation of a health sciences building at Germana Community College. There were two supplements, $30 million for the George Mason Life Science Engineering Building, which will add an, an additional floor. Uh, and $28 million to supplement the Chesapeake Hall project at the Virginia uh, Institute of Marine Science. Um, mentioned the $50 million for the nutrient removal and then a smaller amount uh, for renovations at the JMU steam plant. Um, another item is uh, the uh, Center for uh, Advanced Manufacturing. Uh, what will happen is, is that uh, the uh, language amendment repurposes previously authorized bonds uh, it uses part of it to acquire the CCAM building. Uh, there won't be any change in mission. It's just now that general services will assume control and, and will provide the operation and maintenance. This will help CCAM by providing it some fiscal relief in terms of, uh, in terms of its operating so, uh, uh, costs. And then the remaining amount of dollars that were uh, or bonds that were repurposed will allow us to create a, a Commonwealth Center for Cloud Computing this is a big data, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, high performance uh, cloud computing uh, storage. Uh, it's a partnership of six institutions, as well as the Center for Advanced Manufacturing and the Center for Advanced Logistics. And it will, it will help us leverage uh, potentially uh, to attract uh, tech companies uh, into Virginia. Uh, lastly, in other capital, uh, there was a smaller amount, $750,000 general fund for two small maintenance reserve projects, uh, as well as uh, some non-general fund for uh, the Science Museum, and then two language amendments that you see below. Um, moving on to the last slide, if there are no questions there. This, is the, this slide shows the items uh, that are in the conference report, but were not amendments that were uh, in either the House or the Senate budget going in. They're listed uh, for your review. And with that, I'll turn it back to Ann. Um, yes, I guess it would just be any questions that the members might have for staff related to any of the items we've gone over here. Any, any questions from any of the members? Assuming that there <clears throat> There are not any, no questions from any of the members, then uh, it is my anticipation that tomorrow when the uh, conference report is uh, presented, that we will not have any uh, questions on the floor since we do not have any right now. Great. Okay, so if there like are no, yes. Yes, Mr. Chair, would you like for me to ask a question or you just was kind of, that was your commentary. I, I just wanted to know. No, if there are any questions from the members, please, by all means, we would love to take them now while we have staff so that we can get greater clarity on any concerns that you may have. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is, um, this is Candy. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just had one question about the public safety, the section about the sex offender treatment program. I'm wondering, and this is my ignorance, what that is and if there's a total budget for that. Just want to be able to speak to that if I get questions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Delegate King, this is David Reynolds. Um, I would have to follow up with you on what the total expenditures within that program are currently. Uh, but what that program uh, is doing is um, 
uh, while uh, individuals are um, uh, held in DOC facilities, uh, they are providing, they're being provided evidence-based and um, uh, treatment that's appropriate to uh, the, the sort of offenses and issues that have been identified uh, related to um, uh, sex offenses. There's a particular focus on providing treatment um, uh, to these individuals as they gear up toward um, re-entry uh, and release. So as part of their, their re-entry programming that they receive over the last 12 to 24 months of incarceration, um, there, there's a, a more intense uh, treatment focus. And I guess the overall intent with uh, these additional positions and additional support in this area is to, to help um, sort of beef up the programming that's provided at DOC to see if this is an avenue uh, to help um, keep the, the census down at the Virginia Center for Behavioral Rehabilitation, um, which is a uh, substantially um, more costly uh, venue in which to, to hold um, these individuals and provide uh, uh, sex offender treatment. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, if there are no other questions for staff, uh, this concludes our, brief, our conference report briefing on HB 1800. Thank you, Mr. All Chairman. I'm yes. sorry, I think I see Delegate Adams had her hand raised. Okay, Delegate Adams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I apologize if I missed this somewhere, but I had a constituent write to me upset stating that um, Teachers were getting a 5% raise. Police were getting an 8% raise. I did not hear that and I couldn't find that. So I, I wondered if somebody could speak to that. That was in the compensation. Well, the K-12, the, the teacher one was shown twice, both in K-12 and in the compensation section, which was up in the, the, the first area after Ann's broad overview. It is correct. The teachers are getting 5%, state employees, and adjunct faculty are getting 5%. State police are getting 8% plus a compression adjustment. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other hands? Any other questions? Mr. Chair. Yes. I did this is Delegate Weber. Delegate Weber. Sorry. Uh, in regards to the teacher's compensation, is some of that tied to local match or is that just a straight straight shot from the state is miss mr chair the the uh, there is a, a local match for the teacher pay increase and and the school um, and in order to access the money the school divisions would have to provide at least a two percent increase so uh further question mr chairman Delegate Webb. thank you mr chairman so so then it would be two and three or is it two plus what are plus five so um, it, it it would, it would, it's run through the LCI, the local composite index. So it would vary from school division to school division. But I think part of his question um, to the state has never provided 100% since it's just the state share and it's a salary incentive for local employees. Um, we were cautious in terms of understanding that there is some local stress as well now. So the conferees tried to provide as much flexibility as they could. Mm -hmm. um, first off, to get the raise in 22, school divisions can count anything they gave in fiscal year 21, as well as fiscal year 22, and to ensure it wasn't an all or nothing issue. Um, if they provide 2%, they can access the share of the state's 2%. If they access three, they could access three up to the five. But so in years past, it's just been a flat 3% pay raise in a locality has to get 3% to get any, but the members yep. tried to ensure that if a locality couldn't quite get there, that they could um, at least get a part of it. We'll also point out that the newest pot of federal relief for school divisions, unlike the funds that were handed out in the earlier COVID bills, do say they can use those for pay raises. So the localities have about 840 million coming to them um, and this time around, they could use that to help cover their share of the local cost of the pay raise in this coming year. 
One last question, Mr. Chairman. Delegate Weber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So in regards to that, you, you, you mentioned it was tied to LCI. I've got um, a couple of, I've got a one unique, pretty, pretty unique locality in that it's, um, it's a, a pretty, it's pretty high on the LCI scale. It's 0.79, but it's a very, very poor um, school system. Is there anything, is it the, I guess be, because of that sliding scale, would so they would, may, would it make it easier for that type of school to provide their teachers or pay raise is what I'm asking. Sorry. So the, well, as Ann was mentioning, there was some flexibility with the, the, the federal aid that they could use to, to move funds around to where they, they could meet, that could help them meet that local match requirement. All right, thank you. Okay. Any other any other members? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Delegate Sickles. Mr. Chairman, this is, I just want to make a couple comments. Uh, one, uh, Senator Lewis's uh, soup to nuts education, the cost of uh, education in uh, in 2020 and 21st century is was passed in the uh, there are many inequities in the school funding formula that people have across the state or perceived inequities. And I think that there's going to be a study to look at that um, uh, more comprehensively going forward. Secondly, on the state police issue, we're their only we're the only payer of their salaries. It's not shared with anybody else. We have 300 uh, vacancies in the department now and uh, we are rec recruiting the best we only want the best to serve us and uh, we are not competitive and so that is uh, the reason for that um, pay increase that's above what we're um, allotting for uh, teachers which is has been said is only the state share of that thank you mr chairman i think you have a couple more hands raised from delegate muglar and delegate poindexter uh, Delegate Mugler. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if we go back to slide 61 under transportation allocation, um, there's 93 million for improvements on Interstate 64 corridor between Hampton Roads and Richmond. Um, does that cover that whole segment between West Point and Richmond, which is currently not addressed? Um, they are hoping that that will. It's kind of a two-phase process. Um, the improvements that are being made further down, the toll studies they had done had excluded, as most studies do, um, mm -hmm. weekend traffic, because typically if you were looking at tolls on 66 in Northern Virginia, the traffic is much lower on the weekends. But of course, with all of the travel to Hampton Roads on the weekend for vacationing at Virginia Beach and the like, they are rerunning their toll analysis, hope that that new analysis will free up additional dollars that the Hampton Roads Transportation Accountability Commission is putting towards that project, which would then ensure there's sufficient money to do that chunk that's essentially the New Kent County piece um, on the side. But VDOT's finalizing the numbers on that, but this was a request the administration was working on and the CTB will be approving the uses of these funds um, at their meeting. I believe it's this week. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, Delegate Poindexter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question is on the wastewater uh, treatment plants. There was, uh, I think 50 million in there in a current budget. <clears throat> There was a comment that um, in the future, uh, another 300 million would be needed. And I think my question is, are we committing ourselves to that 300 million now? Or is this aspirational or planned or et cetera? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, Delegate Wright. Uh, with, within the uh, legislation as it um, uh, went through, uh, it, it lays out a specific set of priority um, wastewater uh, treatment uh, improvement projects um, uh, that uh, need to be made 
uh, over the next several years uh, in order for the um, uh, Commonwealth to meet its nutrient reduction targets under uh, phase three of the WIP. And so the, the estimated cost of those projects is a little uh, more than $300 million total over five years. Um, however, if, if I'm recalling the legislation correctly, um, there is language indicating that those projects will be required to go forward even absent the availability of um, uh, funds from the Commonwealth. So those projects will be going forward under the legislation. Uh, what this 100 million uh, that ha has been provided uh, represents is about one third of those required costs. Um, so it's, the, the, the bill as it went through is um, obligating those wastewater treatment authorities to undertake those improvements, but it's not necessarily obligating the, the Commonwealth um, to provide uh, the, the, the funding um, uh, for those projects going forward. Thank you, David. Yeah. Okay, and do we see any more hands? Uh, Delegate Wright has his hand up as well. Okay. And Delegate Del Watts. Delegate, Delegate Wright. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question is on the transportation allocation. I think the slide is still on the screen. And my question pertains to item number four. Uh, the $10 million for state work, statewide network of trails. And I wondered um, if the Tobacco Heritage Trail in uh, Boynton, Virginia is one of those projects that were included. I don't believe that the language, the last draft of the language had any specific earmarks, but I would, um, let me double check that. But I believe it will be left to the CTB, which was the way it was originally proposed in the budget. Um, the, the Senate budget did earmark which specific trails would get it, but I, I don't believe the final version did that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Delegate Watts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, also on, my, on slide 61, is the source of funding general fund or is it directing expenditures out of the Commonwealth Transportation Fund? I think the previous slide, I'll see if I can get up there shows yes. the combination. Um, it does not touch any of the Commonwealth transportation funds or anything that would otherwise go through smart scale, but it does have the 233 million in federal funds that was part of the COVID package. Um, that I believe it's about 20 million in TPOF and six, 15 million in unused prior year revenue sharing funds, and then the 55 million general fund the governor had introduced. So it's a multiplicity of sources, but none of the basic HMOF or TTF funds. Thank you, that's very helpful. <clears throat> Delegate McQuinn has her hand up, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Delegate McQuinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just wanna pause a moment and just thank you for your diligence and all of your efforts and all that was done and the staff for their amazing work. It's been extraordinary. I think we have an awesome budget and uh, just appreciate all you have done. And so I just wanted to say that. I know you thought I was gonna ask a question, but I'm <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you. I'm still waiting on my phone call. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions from, from the members, please? As I indicated, we have the staff here uh, with us now. Uh, it is my anticipation that uh, we'll have a few comments on tomorrow when HB uh, conference report HB 1800 is presented and I hope that we will have uh, strong support from the members of the house as uh, we uh, pass uh, HB 1800. Mr. Chairman, quick, quick. sorry, Mr. we have a late breaking hand from Delegate McNamara. Delegate McNamara. Uh, thank you, Chairman Torian. Uh, just a quick question. Do you have any, uh, any uh, guess or projection on when uh, the budget may be signed? Do you think it'll be before or after reconvene or do you have any guess? And you wanna take that please? Um, I believe I have seen it once where a governor has signed a budget as it was sent over without 
availing himself of the ability to make amendments. Um, so chances are it will not be until after, but you can we can all cross our fingers and hope that it would be sooner. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And with that said, this concludes our presentation for this afternoon. Thank you very much, staff, and thank you, members of the House who uh, attended this uh, briefing. We appreciate it. Have a good afternoon.